Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Western lowland gorilla, but I'm also going to introduce to you some tools that I've made for DNA analysis. Uh, this gorilla is a female and it's from Universitat Pompeu Fabra. I think it sounds very Italian or French or maybe Romanian, I can't tell. Uh, it sounds very Latin to me. Um, so basically what I did is I downloaded the FASTQ, the genome file, then I mapped it using a human reference genome. And as the result, I got this BAM file, which is mapped to a human reference genome. And uh, then I got the 23andMe file for the gorilla. And the 23andMe file is something you can use with GED match, or you can use it with any kind of ancestry service for humans, or even my tools. You can run, um, you can run a 23andMe file with my tools. So let's take a look at what this gorilla scores with GED match. Gorilla, this is how I named it, because guerrilla warfare is like Spanish, Latin American guerrillas who <laughs> like communists and shit. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a funny, funny word. Uh, let's see what it's scoring with Eurogenes. Eurogenes K13, right? Eurogenes K13. It's scoring mostly Sub Saharan and Northeast African, which are both Sub-Saharan African categories. Yeah, it's pretty much 100% Sub-Saharan African. It's not scoring anything outside of Africa. Now, what about MDLP? There's only two calculators that I'm going to look at MDLP. It's MDLP K23B. It's a very interesting calculator because it has a archaic human reference. And gorillas tend to score, as you can see here, scoring overwhelmingly archaic human, 98% archaic human. Chimpanzee, orangutan, and gorilla, they score around 98% archaic human with this calculator. Um, actual Neanderthals, like Neanderthals, score archaic human plus archaic African. Like Neanderthals would score 60% archaic human, then like 35% archaic African, then like 5% everything else, typically. So this archaic human category seems to represent all kinds of non-homo sapien uh, drift. Basically, if you don't have homo sapien drift, you're going to score mostly archaic human. That's how I understand these results. You may correct me in the comments, but please don't. I'm very sensitive to criticism. Uh, okay, what about MZOPK16? MZOPK16, let's take a look at this. 81.4% ancestor. Uh, this is it's, it's a really interesting category because um, it captures Neanderthal shift, Neanderthal genetic drift. It captures Denisova. It captures various monkeys. Monkeys score mostly ancestor here, but it's also the category that mostly gets scored by um, pygmies and sun in South Africa. Because let's take a look at the or um, at the oracle. You're going to see that with the oracle, it's actually very close to. Jihuan people, yeah, it's very close to South African hunter gatherers because this is something they have in common. It seems that um, it seems that out of all modern human groups, the most similar groups to various gorillas and monkeys and whatever are these Jihuan people, these Hoisan people, and South African South African hunter gatherers. Yeah, it sounds really wrong when you say it, but <laughs> it's. Uh, it doesn't sound wrong. It sounds like inappropriate. It sounds like something you should not say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Uh, now let's. What about what about some calculators for specifically for Sub-Saharan Africans? Let's see which kinds of Sub-Saharan Africans this individual gorilla is closest to. Africa nine. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so this gorilla is scoring um, mostly sun, half sun, one quarter biaka pygmy, and what else? Also Mbuti, this is also Pygmy. So mostly it's scoring, it's mostly scoring Sun and Pygmy. That's mostly its components. So, okay, we figured out what kind of human groups it's most similar to. What about its traits? We're gonna find out the traits of this gorilla by running it through some calculators that I've made. Let's start with my um, I2023 calculator. This, this calculator, I started developing it like a couple weeks ago, back when I made my video on free Mongol free medieval mongols and people were asking me well you're only using edar to determine eye shape why don't you use other genotypes too because edar is not the only gene that contributes to eye shape and it's you're right it's not the only gene and i decided 
to try and make a tool that looks at every gene, every single gene that's implicated in eye shape, and it's going to analyze the uh, your genotype and all of these variations, and it's going to give you an ethnicity estimate based on this analysis. It's a very ambitious project. So far, I, I did most of the work for this yesterday, actually. I was just bored, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Let's see what the gorilla scores. What is most similar to in terms of genotype for eye shape? Um, it's by the way, look at this. It's it's homozygous for everything. That means what this means. If it's homozygous for everything, that means there is no variation. There is no variation in gorillas. Every single gorilla is gonna score like this. Basically, every single gorilla is gonna have this exact genotype here. There's no point running any other gorilla through through this. Uh, calculator because there is no variation in their species. It's uh, scoring 43% Sub-Saharan African, Estonian, Amerindian. It's not scoring any East Asian, and it's not scoring any Oceanian. So it's def well, you know, East Asian and Oceanian eye shapes are very different from. Uh, they're very different from gorillas. Gorillas have kind of small, but their eyes they have big upper eyelids. You see this. Double eyelids. They got double eyelids. East Asians don't really have that. Okay. Interesting. Uh, what about other... What about uh, coloring? I have apps for coloring too. All of them are on my GitHub. Right, so... Paste this here. And we're going to paste this here. You need to make sure that the file is in the same folder as your app, because that's how my apps work. Need to make sure files in the same folder. We're going to run it through v 2 and we're also going to run it through Nashakot. We're going to see what its predicted phenotype is with those tools, v 2 and Nashakot. v 2 is a little bit better for eye color prediction than Nashakot, so we're going to go with um, a cat v2 eye color prediction rather than with what Nashakot is going to give us. And by the way, um, this is the uh, this is basically the app that I'm making. I'm not going to share the code. I'm not going to make the code public because, well, you know how it is. I make it public, then somebody steals it. They use my template to uh, improve on it, and suddenly they get all the fame. I get nothing. I don't want to do that. It's my intellectual property. You're not getting it. <laughs> You're not, you're not getting it. But I like uh, developing in code blocks because it's a C++ application and I don't think there is a better I don't think there is a better IDE than code blocks for C++ applications. Okay. I think this is not sure. this is um Akiat V2. Akiat V2 is done. Akiat V2 is saying that this gorilla has dark brown eyes at a likelihood of 92%. Uh Brown eyes at a likelihood of 7.6, hazel eyes 0 0.02, and everything else is so tiny you can't even represent it without scientific notation. Everything else is basically zero because, like, 1.7399 to the power times 10 to the power of negative five that's basically basically zero in scientific notation. Okay, what about Nashakot? What's Nashakot predicting for my gorilla? Nashakot is predicting her to have black hair at 99.8%, snub-shaped nose at 65%, dark brown eyes at 84%, and brown eyes at... What about... Let's take a look at some of the variants that I commonly look for on my channel, like blue-eye haplotypes. Does it have blue-eye haplotype 1? No, does not have blue-eye haplotype 1. What about blue haplotype... What about BH2? No? No, no BH2. What about BH3? No, no BH3. Does not have any of the blue eye haplotypes. So it's a very dark eye colored individual. Well, not, nothing surprising. But what's surprising is that there's some, um, there is two light variants here. There's two light variants here. So she's got some uh, light variants actually, which is kind of surprising. Uh, here, wh where else? Here, she's got some light variants. Kind of interesting thing to see in a gorilla to have light pigmentation variants in humans. Okay, um, I'm going to give you guys a little pitch for for my app. For my AKET, not, no, no, not, for, not for this, for my AI, for my iShape app. So um, 
I'm going to show you what I score with my own eye shape tool. Where's my file? This is, this is my file. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it here. This is not my imputed file. This is just the original file. So it's doing all the genotyping, and we're going to see the result right about now. I'm predicted to have uh, my result is 59% Estonian, 25% South Asian, 10% Middle Eastern, definitely not Oceanian, definitely not East Asian, definitely not Sub-Saharan African. I'm very not Sub-Saharan African. And my eye shape is kind of... I don't know, it's pretty European. Definitely not East Asian or sub-Saharan African. So yeah, that's true. That's it's accurate for me. What about my little little half brother? We're gonna run him through this as well. His eye shape is more hooded than mine. Uh, it's a little bit more maybe Northern European than mine. And okay, and we're also gonna run. We're also gonna run my little sister. Gonna run both of them, and we're gonna compare our results. We uh, we don't have the same parents. I mean, we have the same mom, but we have different dads. So okay, let's take a look. This is uh, me. This is my sister. And where's bro where's Max? Okay, and this is my brother. All right, so who is most African here? Most African is definitely my sister, 0.35%. Uh, for me, it's 0 0.3, 0 0.03. For Max, it's 0 .00, um, 0 0.01. So um, my sister, Kate, is has the most African eye shape of us, of all of us. And Max has the least. What about Estonian? Max has the most Estonian eye shape than me, than Kate. Kate only scores 18% for that. Um, I'm going to actually show you Kate's eye shape in the, in the, on the video right now. I'm going to edit the, the video a little bit to show you what her eye shape is like, and Max too. Uh, for Amerindian, the most Amerindian is Max, followed by me, followed by Kate. The most South Asian is Kate at 31, followed, followed by me at 25, followed by Max at 11. The most Oceanian is, I think it's Max, followed by Kate, fo no, followed by me, followed by Kate. Then the most East Asian is... Is it me or is it Max? No, four is bigger than one. So it's Max. The most East Asian is Max, followed by me, followed by Kate. And the most Middle Eastern is definitely Kate at 47, followed by me at 11, followed by Max at six and a half. So I'm going to show you what they look like, uh, what their eye shapes are like. And you're going to judge for yourself. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, get my app. I'm going to continue developing it. I'm going to continue working on it. We're going to see improvements. We're going to see more and more variations. It's going to get better and better. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.